Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Road to Ranked Roulette series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and we're going to be continuing on with our wacky team that we kicked out from the roulette at the start of the week today. I haven't got the team on the screen in front of us now because we can activate one of our bonus buttons and I am going to do that again today. We've got a switch up that we can activate today. We activated two of those buttons yesterday. If you've missed any of the episodes so far and would like to check out the team and the progress and how we've been getting on this week before coming into today's episode, I'll link a little card up there for you this little eye there that you can click on it'll take you back you can check those out and then come back into this one or check them out after this episode whichever you would prefer but today as I say we're gonna kick off with activating that switch up button I've got to nominate a Pokemon from the team and I know we only included this Pokemon yesterday but I am gonna switch it up already because I feel like we just need a little bit more firepower to the team and kind of go down that line of the hyper offensiveness that we've got at the minute and try and add to that so it's a bit of a risk we could get bitten by it but I feel like it's a worthy a worthy choice to take right now and one that's worth taking because we've had some really good matches this week and you know we had that first match yesterday which was so close but again I feel like we were just lacking a little bit of something to kind of push us over the edge in that one the second game was a bit different we managed to get a win we're sitting on a record of three wins four losses at the minute and I really want to finish positive by the end of the week so I'm going to do everything in my power to be able to kind of come back from this one and make sure that we do finish positive so activating this button the switch up is the first one I'm going to throw Empoleon out I'm sorry Empoleon but let's head over to the wheel and see which Pokemon that you guys have nominated that we're going to have thrown in and included for the rest of this week. <laughs> it's Greninja! Okay, this is weird. Okay, we get rid of one starter Pokemon, get another one. Get rid of the other starter Pokemon, get another one. And they're all water types. <laughs> we start with Feraligatr. We're ending up with Greninja. I'm super happy. Greninja fits in perfectly with that hyper-offensiveness that we've got with the team. As I was saying yesterday, it's probably one of the more hyper-offensive teams that I've played in a long time. So heading over to the team, we can take a quick look at it. As always, the team is down in the description below. There is a role pace, poke pace. Check out the details of the team if you'd like to. I've went for a life orb on the Greninja um, just to give it that a bit of extra power. You've got the gunk shot there that we can potentially one shot Xerneas so that's a really nice tech. Ice Beam can potentially one shot Requaz as long as it's not holding the Assault Vest. Um, we've changed up the Zygarde as well. We went with a Choice Scarf there. I think that its speed's amazing but it is just lacking the jump on some of the more threatening Pokemon in the format. So things like Scarf Tapu Lele, Tapu Koko, Mega Gengar etc that do threaten this team quite heavily so I think just for this episode alone we're going to give that a try Zygote 10% is very cool so I'm super happy to go ahead with this um, haven't changed anything else up in the team but we've got one more button to activate so remember that we will probably activate that tomorrow that is our Patreon button so let's see what we can switch up tomorrow um, but we're right here right now music is on ready to go let's get into this first one today I'm excited about using Greninja though it's gonna be good this team is ridiculously hyper offensive uh, we need to be very careful around potential trick room teams it could be very awkward for us so Let's head over into our screen. Oh man, the green screen. It's just not working, is it? Um, league title defense for us to kick off today will be a good one. And uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent. Um, like I say, we're on three wins, four losses. So a couple of wins today would put us positive and then put us in a really good position to finish up the week tomorrow. We finished positive with last week's team. So I want to keep that trend going this week. Come on guys, let's get some enthusiasm, some, I don't know what the word is, I don't know what the word is, but we just need some confidence behind the team, I just feel like it's going to be good, we can do it, we can do it, we just got to believe, and uh, the Giratina I think out of everything on the team this week has been probably the star of the show for me so far, I mean I've been loving Infernape as well, Mega Gallade is the one Pokemon that I'm a bit sad about, you know, it's been performing, uh, really whiffy and I just don't know whether it's just the team concept it probably is uh, if it was in another team where it was built up around I think it would perform a lot better but it's that speed stat isn't it that 110 it's really tricky the things that it does really want to be hitting it's not quite outspeeding and everything below that it's just not hitting hard enough 
for a Mega Pokemon, it's uh, it's good, but it's just probably not in a restricted format. But um, we'll see. Maybe that is the Pokemon that we switch up tomorrow. It looks like it's going to take a little bit longer to find our first opponent than we would have liked to. So I'm just going to cut it here, guys, and we'll be right back when we find our first opponent. We've got our first opponent of the episode. We've got an opponent from Italy. So let's hop straight into Team Preview. They're on a 1497 rating, so a little bit higher than ourselves. Let's hopefully we can steal some points. But we've got a team consisting of Xerneas, Rayquaza, Incineroar, Tapu Fini, Amoongus, and Nihiligo. So uh, a team concept that was made very popular by Pado, um, winning the very first international championships in the Ultra Series this season. A very strong X rare team. Uh, you've got the Tapu Fini there with the speed control help, the Nihiligo there that does do a lot of work against things that give this team trouble. You've got the uh, fake out support from the Incineroar with the Intimidate there to support the Xerneas and other members of the team and then the redirection from the Amoongus. So I think Tapu Koko going to be very important here for us. Um, Infernip as well with its ability to taunt things is going to be useful. So we can, I think the fake out, the fast fake out is nice as well to bring up front. I'm kind of tempted to bring Zygarde, but at the same time, it is a little bit risky, isn't it? Um, um, do we bring Tapada Coco or do we leave it for late game? I think the late game might be better. Um, let's bring, we could bring Glade to this one, to be honest. It doesn't do too bad against the majority of things on this team. I'm going to actually bring Greninja, Tapu Koko, and I think um, let's go Giratina as our last one. Uh, it's a bit bulkier than a lot of the other Pokemon on the team. And can probably stand up to a lot more. So let's see how we get on. It's not an easy match. It's not an easy match at all. Um, I think we play this team or a very similar team to this at the start of the week and we had Dialga in the team which made it extremely easy. Now taking Dialga out it makes it a little bit more difficult. So let's see. My hair fever, I know I keep talking about this over and over again, but man, last night and today, I am like I've been like I feel like someone's been rubbing flowers in my face in my sleep. It's so bad. I hope for those of you out there that that suffer that um, aren't, aren't feeling too bad about it um, today anyway. If I can make sense. Okay, so we see Tapu Fini and Xerneas come out onto the field. Um, I think... Do we fake out? Yeah, we'll fake out Xerneas. We don't want to allow it to get the... Um, Geomancy set up. And we'll gunk shot into the Fini. I'm, I'm thinking the Fini probably switches to... Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay, that's interesting. Um... We're probably going to see an icy wind though from the Finny, which makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Um, but we'll get the gunk shot into the Finny. I wonder if this can pick up the knockout. I doubt it will, because Finny's just so bulky. Wow, it's so, so close. <laughs> so close. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, um, we'll probably see an icy wind. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um... I mean, we can double up into the the, um, the Xerneas this next turn if we would like to, if it goes for the Geomancy. Um, I think I'm going to have to go for... I'm going to actually lock into Encore in case it does go for that, and I'm going to go for the Gunk Shot. I can see the type of Finny switching out here. Uh, actually, we're not going to... Oh, we, uh, uh, we missed the Gunk Shot. We do see the Geomancy. <laughs> Um, but because we've got the Encore, we can Encore lock this Xerneas in, and then it gives Greninja a bit more time to try and get um, these gun shots going. Oh, man. That is annoying. It's one of those moves, though, isn't it, where you, you kind of take the risk. The Encore doesn't miss, though, Infinite coming through. Okay, so that's that's good for us. Uh, light screen, that's fine. Um, I would definitely say we see the, the Incineral come in this next turn. Um, so I could potentially close combat the Finny, expecting that, and gunk shot the Xerneas once again. So we'll do that because we can get two gunk shots off onto it. It should be enough to pick up the knockout. And I think, oh, Xerneas actually switches out. Requires are coming in. Ha! Didn't expect to see that. And we're close combating into a Tapu Finny. Ideal. 
<laughs> Gunshot. It's the most whiffiest move ever. We could have had this Finny by now. Gonna probably see another Icy Wind here, I reckon. Oh, just a Scald. Okay. And it does take our Infernate down, which is a little bit of a shame. Mmm. Dang. Um. guess we've got to bring in... Uh, I don't really want to bring in Tapu Koko because I feel like this requires a definitely is uh, Solfest. So we'll bring in Giratina. It's a little bit of a better option. Um, maybe switch Greninja out to Tapu Koko here. Um, and go for Tailwind, I think. Yeah, probably. Keeping Greninja around till later is probably a better idea anyway, knowing that the Xerneas is lurking in the back. But it does become a lot more difficult now. Um... All these gunk shot misses haven't helped at all, really, have they? You know, we've been a bit unfortunate with those. <sighs> Greninja, we need to get some glasses for you. So we'll reset that speed drop that we've taken from the icy wind. We'll get Coco onto the field. I can't see an earth power coming into that slot, although being a poison type, we might see it from the ray, I guess. It's hope not. He's losing Coco now would be disastrous for us. Um, it's like a one way to at least hit this requires a decent damage. Oh, crunch. Okay, I mean we take that pretty comfortably. Uh, we do get the tailwind up as well, which is nice. Um, and there's the icy wind that kind of I expected why I went for the tailwind there. Um, we can double into the Rayquaza now. Um, do we bring in Greninja now? It's just... If we bring in Greninja... Um, thing is, that we're definitely going to see an Earth Power, I think, from the Rayquaza. We could take this opportunity to go for a Shadow Ball into the Ray. Um, or we could just actually switch into Greninja. I think switching into Greninja is probably better and just protecting Coco. And then we're in a nice position the next turn to actually take this Rayquaza down. Um, between Coco and in Greninja, an Ice Beam and Gigavolt should be enough to do the work. It's a Dragon Ascent. Of course, it's into Greninja. Mm. Okay. That's not ideal at all. That's really not ideal. Uh, I would have expected you to target the Coco, but never mind. Um, let's bring in Giratina and see what we can do. I really need to get rid of the Finny, that's the thing. Um, but I also need to get rid of the Ray. And I'm going to have to hope that a Wild Charge, Gigavolt, and a Shadow Ball is enough to get the Ray after the Dragon Ascent boost. So here we go. There's the Z move. Ah, these gunk shots at the start. I mean, you've got to think that the Xerneas would have been gone by now if the gunk shots had hit. It depends on the bulk of the Xerneas, of course, as well. Um, but like I say, we can't dwell on it too much. It's just one of those things. Let's see the damage is. Okay, come on, Shadow Ball. Please be enough behind the light screen. I don't know if it's going to be. It's enough. Okay, we did it. We did it. We've still got to deal with the link in um, Xerneas. We could do the icy wind miss here. Not going to happen now. Um, hmm. Yeah, because the Xerneas comes in now and it's in a pretty nice position to just clean up, really, for what we've got in front of us. And the Tapu Fini is such a good disruptive Pokemon, supporting Pokemon. We can't really put all our eggs in one basket when his Xerneas comes onto the field, it's still full health. This is what I mean, if the, you know, if even one gun shot had hit, it probably would be in Thunderbolt range now. Where it's not. Um, is that Tailwind still up? I don't know if it is. Uh, yeah, we got one one last turn of it. Um, okay. 
Now we could pre predict that the, the Zinnius does protect and go for a Thunderbolt into the Finny. Rather than putting all our eggs in one basket, I feel like the match is pretty much done now. Um, but let's get rid of the Finny here. I'm gonna get a Shadow Ball into the Xerneas, but it's likely after the icy winds that we've had, it'll outspeed Giratina anyway. Oh no, we still outspeed it. Can we get a special defense drop? Oh, it just goes for a Moonblast. Where are we going? Into the Coco. Can we take? Nah. No. Ah, it's done. It's done, and our Tailwind Pit is out, and that is the end of that. So, um, the story of that match is Gunshot is is a great move, but at the same time, a terrible move. Um, we can go for another Shadow Ball, see if we can pick up a knockout, but we're going to get Moonblasted before we can do anything. And even if not, then <clears throat> the Incineroar is in a great position to pick up the knockout, so... Poor Giratina, last Pokemon standing. Just can't do the business here. Greninja letting us down. The newest member to the team. <sighs> Come on, Greninja. <sighs> disappointing, disappointing. So it takes a tally to three wins, five losses. We still got time. We still got time to come back. Tie this up. Finish positive. Um, we could maybe squeeze... Well, we can still do it, to be honest, if we win out the rest of this week. I know I'm concentrating on results rather than the actual matches right now, and that's not something you should normally do. You should normally concentrate on what's in front of you. Rather than the, um, rather than this damn green screen, why is it doing this today? It's really annoying. And I feel like I'm way further closer to the camera as well. I'm like, hey, hey, how you doing? But, yeah. Um... We can still do it. We should just not concentrate on the actual end result and concentrate on each game that we've got coming to us. So that's the big thing. Um, let's pick some mad music today. Let's go wild Pokemon version one. Ah, my hair fever. Anyone out there that suffers from hair fever, I do. My heart goes out to you. It's a horrible thing to have. Um, I can't imagine what it would be like not suffering. It's like a seasonal thing it comes every single year as soon as there's nice hot weather and I love the sun I am definitely a sun baby um, but consequence of that is you can't really sit outside for too long and it's always a risk going outside because then your eyes go and your nose goes <laughs> it's just rubbish and you know I've not got anyone else to blame I refuse to take um, hay fever tablets because I'm just I'm just it's Morally, I don't believe in it. So, I should. I normally get local honey that I take, and that supposedly helps. But I haven't done it this yet, so maybe that's why I'm like this. But we got a next opponent, so let's get straight into this next one. Uh, we got Duskmane, Necrozma, Tornadus, Groudon, Tapu Fini, Kangaskhan, and Incineroar. I really love the uh, the concept of this team. I really do. I think it's a really nicely put together team. So hopefully. We can give it a good match. You got the uh, probably going to be Ultra and across my Tailwind support from the Tornadus Torn support there as well. The Groudon um, going to be something that will take advantage of the Tailwind for sure. Got the Tapu Fini for terrain control, protect against those status attacks. Obviously, offer a little bit more speed control probably with Icy Wind and uh, Nature's Madness Haze, um, and maybe Heal Pulse. Uh, who knows what else it's got on there? Light Screen potentially as well, and then the two support Pokemon in Mega Kangaskhan, both holding Fake Out and the Incineral with the Intimidate. So, um, right, Giratina going to be very good here. I do do like Giratina. I'm going to bring Giratina actually. I'm going to bring Infernip. Infernip, another Pokemon going to be very good here. Um. Tapu Koko going to be good against the Ultra Necrozma and that Tornadus and Tapu Fini, so we do want that. And then maybe Zygarde could be good with the Scarf to come in late game and really cause some havoc. So, I yeah, I'm pretty happy with these. Let's kick into it, and we're gonna we're gonna get a win. We are gonna win. I feel like this matchup is good. Um, we just need to make sure that we're concentrating on the game, taking our opportunities when we can. And I think we can pull it back to one loss deficit, which we're two at the minute, but it's fine. It's all about having fun, and we're playing these crazy teams, so. 
I just feel like I need to be doing better. This is the whole concept. Like, I love this series, but I feel like, personally, I'm I'm letting the series down. I need to be doing better. And I don't know if it's just something... I don't know. Whether it's... Um, whether it's true or not, I don't, I'm not too sure. Do we go for a Tailwind here? I'm kind of scared of it. And maybe a sneaky trick room from this Necrozma. Definitely could be. Uh, we'll go for a Shadow Bolt into the Necrozma. We'll get some damage off there and go for a Faker into the Incineroar just to prevent that from faking us out. Incineroar gonna switch out, expecting the fake out because we're so predictable, man. Um, and this lovely shiny Tapu Fini hitting the field now, activating that Misty Surge. Let's see what this Necrozma does. Get some chip damage onto the Finny there uh, and get a tasty Shadow Bolt. I think we're gonna see a Trick Room. Which, do I mind? Mm, probably not. Not so much. Um, nah. Uh, we'll go for another Shadow Ball into the Necrozma. Um, do we switch things up now? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we do, to be honest. I could just lock Tapu Fini into something uh, with an Encore. Because Infernip's going to go last. I don't think we'll get taken down here. We shouldn't. We might get Photon Geysered. Gonna see heal pulse. That's fine. I mean, stop and tap if you need doing anything else. It's a bit annoying because it is just gonna constantly. Ooh, gravity. Oh, if we'd only on cord. <laughs> then that's coming the crossman. Setting up the field for this Groudon to come in for sure. Uh, we'll get another shadow ball off, but we're stalling out these these trick room turns, which is the main thing. So. Um... We are going to be able to get the Encore into the Tapu Fini, which is very nice. Uh, we'll lock it into that Heal Pulse. Again, can be good, so it's not really going to be able to do very much other than that. And we can go for another. Actually, you know what? I predict that maybe we see the Groudon come in. So I'm going to go uh, Overheat, and I'm going to go Earth Part into the Necrozma here. Oh, dang. Dang it. Dang it, Blast. Okay, that's fine, though. Uh, we should be able to remove the Necrozma from the field. We're going to see a Photon guys. That's probably into Inferno, I imagine. Yeah, we'll take us down to our Sash. But the, the Fire Monkey is not giving up. Got that Blaze ability activated now. We'll see an Earth Power here. Get that chip, set it up for an Overheat. And it will definitely be enough from this range. Even without the Sun, this thing is going to be burning up. The Necrozma goes down, and we've wasted a nice amount of these Trick Room turns as well by doing this. So, next turn we might have to sacrifice Infernip. Um, but if we can time it right, we can potentially get Zygarde in when the Trick Room ends, and that would be ideal. So... Let's see how many turns we got left. Maybe two. So I don't know whether it's worth going for yeah two turns, going for the Earth Power now because of the Heal Pulse. Um, we could go for another Overheat into Groudon. We're going to lose Infernip regardless. Whatever here. Type of going to switch out. Ooh, we're going to see Incineroar hit the field. That's fine. Um, it just means we might need to bring Coco in rather than, um, hmm, than Zygod. Because I feel like Zygod's going to be the one thing at the end that can probably win this game for us. Miss, miss, miss. Nah, no miss. No miss. Infinite's done a good job. Good job here, though. Good job. Good job. Um, do we bring in Zygod now? Because I feel like, the thing is, you could double into the Giratina, predicting and protect on the Coco. And Coco's going to be something really useful to have in an endgame situation where... Um, yeah, it's kind of difficult where the Finny's... when the Groudon's gone. Um, let's go for 1,000 arrows and an Earth Power. Throw chop, okay. Oh man, it does so much damage. Precipice blades. Zygote should take this. The gravity I forgot about. Now we're knackered. We are knackered. Ah, fool. 
And I thought Zygarde would take that, to be honest. That is... Zygarde, 10% form. It's like the worst Zygarde form. Super fast. But, Trick Room, I've said it all along. This team... Ah, man, we're in a deficit now. This is not so good. Um, right, Trick Room has ended. Let's see if we can pick up a, a knockout into this Incineroar with a Gigavolt. The Groudon sitting like, yeah. <clears throat> Just hit the forfeit button now. Let's do that. Okay. Very good game to my opponent. Unfortunately, my friends. Let us down again. Let us down again. Once again. Let, let, let. Ugh. It's just it's been two difficult matches today, I feel. Um, nice that we get the Incineroar. There's a little consolation there. Um, Precipice Blade's going to connect and Coco stands no chance. Yeah. Ah. We just need to get through that one more turn of Trick Room. And I'm thinking, we would have been better bringing in Coco, protecting. Yeah, we definitely would have. Because, well, the thing is, like, if, even if we get Zygarde in on the field when the Trick Room's ended, I don't think a thousand hours is going to be enough to pick up a knockout onto the Groudon anyway. So, we couldn't have taken one Precipice Blades with Zygarde. That's maybe a calc we need to look at. Um, especially without the band, we're not going to be doing it. Zygarde's just whiffy, isn't it? So that's that's the big, big story here. I've had a lot of fun now, and I hope you guys have. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on today's episode of The Change Up. And uh, we've got one more button that we can activate, which we're going to do tomorrow. It is going to be that Patreon button, so make sure you don't miss that episode. Hopefully, we can include something that gives us just the glue that pulls everything together and makes us a massively solid unit going forward. So... I'm going to end it here, guys. Have a great rest of your day. As I say, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you for the next one. So until then, take care, and bye-bye.